Hello, amazing hackers. I hope you're all doing well today. So for today, I would like to talk about JWTs because we've all seen them, authorization, bearer, and then this long as token well today i'm going to try and demystify it a little bit for you because it's not as complicated as people make it out to be because a jwt token or a json web token i'm going to pull up a whiteboard here so let's start with the very first question that we all have on jwt tokens what are they what are they used for they're used for authorization and excuse my bad handwriting authorization now why is this important because they're not used for authentication now this means for example let's say that i have a user and this user here his name is chad he's a real sexy guy and he's aged is 21. Now I don't want to keep querying the database to know chat's age. That will take a lot of operations. And if I need that on a regular basis, it will take even more operations. So that's why it's not a good idea to keep querying the database constantly. We want this to have a local storage basically but we you guys know as well as i do that local storage so as soon as i allow chat to store this on his computer at home there we go chat has a beautiful windows 98 computer excellent choice in operating system there chat and on his computer i want to store that age 21 of course i cannot do that unencrypted because then chat could change his own age and age might be very important in my program because my application might not allow people under the age of 21 for example if i sell hard liquors in my, in my application now i need to know that and for that they developed a jwt token and now the cool thing about these jwts is you can just go to jwt.io and there you can dissect a JWT token. Now a JWT token is going to consist of some text and it's going to be like this. And then you have a period in there, then some more text, but it's all mumbo jumbo and we can't really decipher it for now. And then we have some more text even so. We have a text, a period, text, period, and then even more text. Now, what is this all for? At first, you have the header, and the header is going to tell the application what, uh, what algorithm was being used to encrypt this data. Now, to encrypt that data, we need the encryption key. We don't have it. We can decrypt this all we want because it's a JWT token. It's very easily decryptable, but we cannot actually, um, we cannot actually, in this JWT token example, we cannot encrypt it again because this is the body. And in the body, it will say, for example, that the age is 21 it will say when the uh when the token expires and a couple of other things like when it was produced for example the location data can be in there and that's the body of your jwt token and then this tail here we have our key and that's the most important part because for most of these JWT tokens, you will not know that key. And that means that even if I do change my age to 21 or over, it's not going to work because I cannot re-encrypt that key to a state where the application will accept it. Only the application knows the encryption key. So as soon as chat logs in here, the computer is going to send him a JWT token. 
that contains this data as age, as geolocation, and anything else that contains the authorization, like as email address, for example. Those are things that can be in the JWT token, and that's why we want to spend so much attention on those tokens, because they can, of course, if you can forge them, you can do some pretty nasty stuff in the application. But again, you really don't know the key often. So what will you do? You're going to test for the non-algorithm. Uh, in the header, you can say that the encryption was done with the non-algorithm and then you don't need a key. And sometimes older applications will accept this. Now, newer applications are wiser to this, will not accept it, of course. But then we can still look for a leaked key. If we ever see that key leaked, then we know that we have a bingo because if we can forge those JWT tokens, that is a bad thing for the application. That was a little word on JWT tokens. So um, thank you guys so much for listening to that. It wasn't that expensive because there isn't really that much to say about JWT tokens in general. Uh, I can show you an implementation of how it works, but I just use JWT from Composer for PHP, and that's how I generate my JWT tokens. So um, for me, I'm not that advanced in it. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I just know that JWT tokens are very valuable. I know that we have a header, a body, and a key, and I know that the encryption key is a very valuable thing, because even if you can just uh, cast a long lasting JWT token. That's also not the intention. JWT tokens should expire and they should expire the moment you log off. That's basically for a pen test, is that that's very important because if your JWT does not invalidate properly, you don't have proper session invalidation on logout. So that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.